Okay, good Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Welcome, my name is uh, Ferdi Bulma, uh, um, Higher Education Manager at EIT Raw Materials. Um, and I'm gonna to talk to you today a little bit about EIT Raw Materials Academy. Uh, and I'm also, of course, going to pass over to uh, my colleagues who will give you information about SINREM. Maybe you'd like to briefly introduce yourself, uh, Aaron? Yeah, hi, my name is uh, Aaron uh, Blovi. Uh, I work at Ghent University in uh, Belgium, and Ghent University is the coordinator of the SINREM program, um, where this uh, webinar uh, is about uh, today. So I'm the administrative and technical coordinator. I uh, am not involved in teaching or in science. Um, and uh, as uh, Ferdi said, I will uh, give a brief uh, a presentation on the SINREM program uh, within uh, 10 minutes or so. Nice to meet you. Thank you, Aaron. And uh, we're also lucky to be joined by Martha. Yes, hello. Thank you, Ferdi. Um, my name is Martha Henderson, and I am an alumni of the program. So I was part of the um, SINREM 2020 cohort and just gr graduated in September. Um, so I am from, I'm from Canada um, and moved to Europe for this master's, um, and I have a background in geology. Excellent. Thank you very much, Martha. So, um, I'm happy to see so many people join us today. Um, you may not have heard of EIT or EIT Raw Materials before, so I'm going to explain to you uh, who we are. Um, so EIT uh, is a body of the European Union, and uh, it was created in order to boost innovation, uh, entrepreneurship in Europe, uh, to tackle the big challenges that we as a society and indeed societies across the world uh, are facing. So EIT was designed to work uh, with um, three different types of organizations. Um, it works very closely with universities. Um, it works very closely with business and it works very closely with research organizations. So uh, we as EIT run a lot of different activities with these organizations. The aim of these activities is really still to boost innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, so uh, it's called the Knowledge Triangle. So all of our uh, EIT programs are related and work with the Knowledge Triangle. Now EIT um, has uh, eight knowledge and innovation communities. Um, so we are covering all of the big uh, sectors and challenges facing uh, our economy and facing our environment. So we have uh, uh, innovation communities related or dedicated to climate, uh, to digital transformation, to uh, improving our uh, sustainability of our food supply, to improving our health, uh, going for green energy, uh, clean manufacturing, um, changing the way that we uh, travel around our cities, what's EIT Urban Mobility, and then last but not least, EIT Raw Materials, uh, and this is our community uh, from whom we are speaking to you, and our aim is to develop raw materials into a major strength for Europe, um, and of course to trans, uh, transform our economy into a more circular economy in the raw materials area. So uh, why precisely have we created, or why precisely did the EIT create EIT raw materials? Why is this uh, something that is taking place alongside uh, climate, alongside health, alongside digital? Well, um, as you may probably be aware, the number of raw materials uh, in use uh, in our economy, in our lives, is growing uh, exponentially, in fact, um, starting with uh, just a few raw materials uh, two or 300 years ago, up to many, many uh, materials today. And these are really important also for our energy transition. Um, they are used in uh, all around our daily lives. So for transportation, for living, uh, for uh, the digital um, uh, activities as well. Um, and they are also uh, very important to uh, reaching the sustainable development goals. So you might not think about this, but it is uh, raw materials are related to a number of the sustainable development goals. Um, and uh, some examples here of how uh, photovoltaics or solar panels, um, are uh, the raw materials used in them are important for uh, climate action, uh, affordable and clean energy, uh, same with wind energy and electric vehicles, 
And then again, we need raw materials for our digital infrastructure and our um, digital operator as well. Um, and a, a little example of that, you can see in this graph how many raw materials uh, in both in terms of quantity and in terms of variety are required for new clean technologies such as electric cars, offshore wind or solar panels compared with old uh, dirty technologies such as uh, uh, petrol powered cars, such as coal, gas uh, or indeed uh, oil powered vehicles. So um, the demand for raw materials, the variety of raw materials that we need um, as a society that moves towards a uh, low carbon uh, um, economy is really huge. And this is what we are here for as EIT raw materials to ensure that Europe um, has the supply as well as the technologies needed to make use of these raw materials uh, in, a clean, uh, in a clean and low carbon manner. Um, but we have a long way to go. So you can see that uh, there is a really low recycling rate uh, of many of the raw materials that we are using. Uh, and this is something that uh, we need to work towards improving. So I'm not going to go too much into more detail, but I will just uh, show you the different areas that EIT raw materials actually works in. You can see here it's everything from the right the beginning of the raw materials value chain where we are looking at exploration. Um, uh, mineral exploration and then mining through to the processing of those raw materials, uh, their substitution for uh, um, less damaging uh, raw materials, for example, uh, recycling, and of course, the full circular economy. So we are looking at all of these themes at EIT raw materials. Um, and we have a number of master's programs uh, which cover different areas of the raw materials value chain. So um, SINREM is one of now nine. Uh, master's programs uh, run by EIT Raw Materials Community. Um, and uh, you will hear all about uh, what is special about SINREM in a moment from Aaron and Martha. Um, I, you can see how many different universities are involved in these programs. So uh, of course, we as EIT Raw Materials are not a university. We are not awarding or delivering the courses. This is down to the universities that you are studying at, and they are the ones who will give you your diploma. Um, but we are like an umbrella who are bringing together the different programs. So this is how it works. Um, I won't show this video, but I will just mention to you the EIT label. Now, all of these programs, including SINRAM, hold the EIT label. And, and this is a, a quality seal for educational programs. And it basically demonstrates that besides your technical knowledge that you are learning, you are also gaining skills in innovation and entrepreneurship. So this we see as really important at EIT, uh, that students should learn not only uh, the technical knowledge that they need to make the innovations, but of course the soft skills as well that you will need to actually make those innovations happen and bring them to market. So there are a lot of opportunities during your studies for you to work uh, alongside other students, alongside businesses, uh, professionals, entrepreneurs, to understand how you can actually uh, make that innovation happen more than just coming up with ideas, but then actually uh, making the impact that you want to. So um, I will leave it there. And I think um, as we uh, talk afterwards with uh, Martha and Aaron, we can also uh, explain to you a little bit about the extra activities that EAT Raw Materials Academy uh, provides to students who are on the SINREM program. But for now, let me um, pass over to Aaron. Uh, so he can introduce the SINREM program. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Thirty. So I will also share my screen. And if all goes well, now you can see the first slide of my slideshow. Okay, I see Ferdi nodding. Um, so indeed, Ferdi just uh, told you that SINREM, the International Master in Sustainable and Innovative Natural Resource Management, is one of the nine EIT label uh, programs that are organized under the umbrella of EIT uh, raw materials. Um, okay. So let me start uh, by explaining a little bit more about the scope of uh, SINREM. Uh, so you saw on one of the previous slides of Ferdi that there are nine EIT label programs. All of them have their own 
um, yeah, scope and specialization in, in, uh, in related to raw materials. Um, and, uh, and the unique thing about Synrem is that it's covering the complete value chain of mineral and metal raw materials. Uh, so we are not focusing solely on recycling or uh, extraction of raw materials, but we cover the complete uh, value chain. And this uh, graph you can see on the slide um, was also part of the presentation of, uh, of Ferdi. Uh, but these are actually the areas that are covered by Synrem. Uh, so uh, Uppsala University uh, is specialized more in the geo-resource exploration and also in the entrepreneurship part of the program. Um, Ghent University covers uh, parts on, uh, on, on recycling and recovery and also on circular uh, economy, circular uh, societies. And in Freiburg, uh, they focus on, on the sustainable processes, um, like uh, uh, yeah, processing the mineral and metal uh, raw materials. Uh, so often I receive applications from candidates um, that have a background in uh, in natural resources, as in the broader sense of natural resources, like in wildlife management or ecotourism or forestry. So this is not the scope of uh, of Synrem, as uh, as was already told, that we focus on mineral and metal uh, raw materials. Um, okay, so the target audience uh, of Synrem is therefore chemical scientists, chemical engineers, uh, geologists or applied geologists, environmental scientists, engineers. Uh, materials engineers and also mining mineral and metallurgical uh, engineers um, and very important is that a uh, solid background in chemistry uh, is important if you want to apply uh, for uh, CINREM. Um, this is a repetition of one of the slides of, of, uh, of Bird, and I see that the graph on the left is even a bit an older version so it was already explained what you can see in this uh, in this graph but in the right uh, part of the slide, on the graph on the right part of, um, of this uh, slide, you can see that a lot of mineral and, and minerals and metals with high economic importance um, have, uh, are facing a supply risk uh, because uh, a lot of those uh, minerals and metals um, are extracted in regions in the world uh, that are politically not very stable. And we all know uh, where that leads to. So. Um, Synrem um, wants to also uh, make sure that our graduates um, can manage those mineral and metal uh, raw materials in a sustainable way and make sure that there is a stable uh, and sustainable uh, supply of those uh, minerals uh, and metals. Um, so about the Synrem program, uh, so Synrem is organized by a consortium of three European universities. So I work for Ghent University in Belgium. Uh, we are coordinating the Synrem program, but also uh, members of the consortium are Uppsala University in Sweden um, and the Technical University uh, Berg Academy in Freiburg in uh, Germany. Um, and if we then look at the program of uh, SINREM, so in the first year, you will start the SINREM program at Ghent University in uh, Belgium, where we will have uh, the kickoff event uh, with all SINREM uh, students. But then during the first weeks after your arrival in Ghent, you will travel all to Germany, where you will follow a block course of three weeks. Um, it's called Problems and Innovations in the Process Chain of Mineral Resources where you will be taught about this complete value chain of mineral and metal raw materials during the three weeks. Then you will all come back to Ghent University for a number of uh, courses on uh, recycling technology, circular economy, uh, um, uh, use of uh, materials, um, clean technology, and so on during the first uh, semester, during the rest of your first uh, semester at Ghent University. And then after uh, the after New Year uh, and the exams uh, of the first semester courses, you will travel to Sweden, to Uppsala for the second semester, where you will focus on geo-resource exploration and also on the, on the entrepreneurship uh, courses taught in the program. And then during the summer between the first and the second year, year, you will again travel to uh, Germany, to TU Freiburg, to follow the resources chemistry course. It is again a block course of uh, six to seven uh, weeks during summer. 
Then the rest of the summer, you will have time uh, for your mandatory internship. You can also do your internship uh, uh, at another time um, if uh, you have available time in your study uh, program. Uh, and then the third semester, so the first semester of your second year, um, you will follow an optional or an elective major. So that means that all SINREM programs will be divided over five uh, majors. Two of them are organized by Ghent University, uh, so the major in uh, resource recovery and sustainable materials, and another major in uh, circular societies. The third major is offered by TU Freiburg on sustainable processes. And um, the uh, fourth and fifth major are organized by uh, Uppsala University, uh, the major in resource exploration and uh, the major in sustainable entrepreneurship. So in the third semester, you can put your own focus um, um, on uh, the program. Uh, so as I told, uh, we are shaping T-shaped professionals during the first year, you will uh, be taught about uh, the complete value chain of mineral and metal raw materials. And in your second year, you will be able to put a focus, uh, your own focus in, uh, in, in your uh, master uh, program. And um, then also during the third semester, you will follow an online course organized by TU Freiburg Literature Study and a Business Plan. Uh, and then the fourth uh, semester uh, will be uh, dedicated to your master thesis research also in the area where you uh, will uh, follow your uh, major. So if you follow a major at Ghent University, you will also do your master thesis research in a related uh, topic at uh, Ghent University. So then about the admission uh, requirements, I already uh, talked briefly about it. So we have academic admission requirements. So to start the SINREM program, so SINREM is a master program, so that means uh, you need to have obtained already a bachelor degree before uh, starting and before applying for the SINREM program. Of course, in a related field um, of, uh, uh, of SINREM. Um, and you have to have obtained very good to excellent study results during your bachelor degree. Um, every year we receive more than 500 applications and around 30 students start. So uh, this is a top quality master program we are recruiting top quality students um, uh, and therefore the admission requirements are also quite uh, strict. And as I already uh, talked, uh, as I already said, um, chemistry, a base, a solid base in chemistry is very important to start the SINRA program. And that is why we uh, also uh, demand that you have uh, obtained at least 10 ECTS or equal credits in chemistry during your bachelor degree. So if you haven't had any chemistry courses during your bachelor degree, you will not be admitted to uh, the SINREM program. And next to those uh, academic admission requirements, we also have the English language requirements. So SINREM is taught fully in English. Um, and uh, to be able to uh, be admitted to the program, uh, you need to prove your English language uh, proficiency. You can do that via an Yields, TOEFL and Cambridge Certificate of Advanced English uh, test and a certain list of countries uh, where um, higher education is organized in English are exempted to provide one of these three tests and can uh, also apply based on the language of um, instruction certificate. So then your university where you followed your bachelor degree has to uh, uh, deliver or write a certificate in which they state that you have followed your bachelor degree in English. Um, but uh, all the detailed um, admission uh, criteria can be found on the hyperlink in this uh, slide. And uh, also this presentation will be recorded and will be uh, made available later so you will uh, be able to consult these uh, slides uh, later. Then also the SINREM program is offering scholarships. So SINREM is an Erasmus Mundus uh, program and uh, so we offer full Erasmus Mundus uh, scholarships to uh, a certain number of applicants. So when you apply you will be ranked um, and the top uh, uh, ranked students um, will be selected for an Erasmus Mundus scholarship. 
uh, the scholarship uh, is up to uh, 49,000 euro for the two years. A part of those 49,000 euros will go to the program as a participation fee or tuition fee. But um, in short, you will receive a thousand euro monthly allowance and some travel uh, budget. Next to the Erasmus Mundus scholarships, SINREM also awards uh, partial EIT AFSA grants. Uh, so they are funded by uh, EIT. Um, this uh, is not a monthly allowance of thousand euro for the complete two years of study. It's a partial uh, scholarship. Uh, in total, it's uh, 13,500 euro that you will receive in allowances starting in June of your first year. Uh, again, uh, more details about scholarships are explained on our website. The hyperlink uh, can be found on, uh, on the slide. Um, and there you can read more details uh, about the scholarships uh, we offer. Then also important are the application deadlines. So if you want to apply for an Erasmus Mundi scholarship, whether you are a European or a non-European student, the deadline to apply for an Erasmus Mundi scholarship is always the 28th of February. So within a few weeks, um, if you uh, are a non-European student, uh, it's a non-EEA, so this is the uh, European Economic uh, Area. Uh, these are the member states of the EU and uh, Iceland, Liechtenstein and Norway. If you are not uh, a national of those countries, you also have to apply um, uh, by the deadline of the 28th of February. If you are a European student, so an EEA uh, student, um, and if you don't want to apply for an Erasmus Mundus scholarship, but only for an AFSA scholarship, for example, um, the deadline uh, is the 31st of May. Um, and so after you have submitted your application uh, file on our online uh, application portal, uh, also the instruction on how to apply can be uh, found on our website. Um, you will receive a message from us uh, during uh, the second week of March, uh, whether or not you are shortlisted for admission or scholarship. This shortlist, so if you are on the shortlist, it does not mean that you are already selected, but the chance that you are selected is then quite high and, and, and very real. Then this shortlist will be uh, checked by the Synonym Student Selection Committee and they will make a final decision on which students will be awarded a scholarship and which student students will be awarded uh, admission to the SINREM program. Um, this commission will meet uh, during the third week of March, and then by uh, mid-April, you will receive uh, all of the uh, candidates uh, for uh, SINREM will receive the final outcome, the selection results of the scholarship selection and admission selection. I think these were the most important practical uh, things I had to uh, tell you. Um, there are a few links I uh, wanted to uh, show you. So, of course, I, it was also mentioned already uh, on the previous slides, our website. Also on the page of admission and applying on our website, there is a hyperlink to the Synergy application manual. So this manual contains a lot of information uh, with screenshots step-by-step uh, -step to guide you through the application process on our online application portal. So a lot of questions I received via email are actually answered in this manual. So I uh, encourage you all uh, before applying or, or while applying, uh, please um, open this manual and, and read it. Um, and of course, we also have an email address, syndrom at ugent.be. So if you don't find an answer to your question in the manual on, on, or on our website, uh, you can, of course, always send uh, me an email. Thank you very much, uh, Aaron, uh, for the presentation. So um, perhaps we can, uh, before we go to questions, although there are just a, actually just a couple of questions in the chat, so maybe we can quickly uh, tackle those before we um, uh, start uh, with uh, a few questions for Martha about her experience. So um, first question, I think you've probably answered these already, uh, Aaron, so maybe you can reiterate, can engineers from electronic domains apply? Yes, uh, so there are a few obvious backgrounds that can certainly apply. I, I mentioned them on the slide, chemical engineers and so on, environmental engineer, applied geologists. 
for some of uh, the backgrounds, it's it's a bit um, yeah more difficult. For example, el electronic engineers, uh, also process engineers, and so on. Also, petroleum and gas engineers. Um, if you meet the criterion that you have obtained uh, at least ten credits in chemistry, and if you can prove also in your motivation that you understand where the SINREM program is about, so we focus on mineral and metal raw uh, materials then you are eligible to apply. Of course, if your background does not fit 100% with the scope of SINREM, that means that you will be ranked a bit lower for scholarship selection. So the chance that you will be selected for an Erasmus Mundus or an AFSA scholarship will be a bit lower if you have a background that is not fully um, uh, fully uh, yeah, suited for the SINREM program, but you can apply. And then I think a related uh, question is, can an agricultural uh, engineer apply? I remember that today I received an, an application from an agricultural uh, scientist and I checked the transcript of record of this applicant and I saw um, um, that uh, they had, or the transcript of record contained courses in metallurgical, uh, engineering uh, and that there was quite a lot of chemistry in, in, in the agriculture engineering um, program. So I admitted those that student or I, I selected those students for for the for the for the shortlist. Um, but uh, if you CIRM is not an agriculture program. So if you have a background in agriculture and you want to continue your career in agriculture, then SINREM is not the best program uh, for you. But it's a bit up to you to decide. Uh, but just make sure, and maybe Marta can, can tell something about that too, just make sure that's very important that you fully understand where SINREM is about. Uh, read our website. There is quite a lot of information on our website on the, on the, on the scope and the content of the different majors. So make sure that when you apply for SINREM, you also already have an ID on which major you want to follow. Um... Thanks, Aaron. Yeah, Martha, maybe do you want to comment on the, maybe the background of students who were in your cohort and what kind of um, ambitions they had? What sort of area of work did they want to move into? Um, after completing SINREM? And this can maybe give some of the, the people who are listening here um, an idea about whether it's the right kind of thing for them based on their long-term uh, career plans. Yes, absolutely. Um, so in, in my cohort, we had students um, from all over. So we have some geologists, including myself. We have um, some mining engineers, um, metallurgical engineers, chemical engineers, um, chemists, um, we had a physics, physics student or a physicist, um, what else, environmental scientists, environmental and safety engineer. Mm, so really it's, yeah, quite broad, the subject matter. Um, so there's room for a lot of different um, types of different experiences and um, backgrounds, um, but it, like Aaron mentioned, it's really important that you understand what syndrome is so that you're not disappointed with the content because it is very much focused on um, mined raw materials. Um, I would say uh, the ambitions of our my classmates, they some of us came from uh, having work experience um, and then some right out of out of their bachelor's degree. Um, but what we we're all kind of working towards was looking for more how we can implement like sustainability into um, whether it's like exploration geology or metallurgical engineering, um, just looking for innovative um, ways to include that into our workflows. Thanks very much, Martha. And, and there's another question here, uh, maybe for Aaron, which is uh, from uh, Junior, which uh, he, he says that he's going to finish his um, bachelor's in mining engineering in July 2023. Um, can he still apply to join uh, this year or would he need to wait for 2024? Well, this is uh, one of the examples that is quite well explained in this uh, Synonym application manual. Um, so if you want to apply for an Erasmus Mundus scholarship, your uh, application file containing your bachelor degree and also a language certificate should be complete 
um, before the deadline of the 28th of um, uh, February. If uh, you want to uh, apply only for the AFSA scholarship, uh, then um, it is possible to send your, for example, if you on, only obtain your bachelor degree in, in June, uh, that you then send us your bachelor degree and that you then upload in the application portal a certificate of expected graduation from your university so that your university stays. I think someone uh, has it muted the, the microphone. Uh, I think that was not a question for me. Thank you. Um, so if you have not obtained your bachelor degree uh, before the application deadline of 28th of February, you can apply, but not you cannot be selected for an Erasmus Mundus scholarship. I also saw another question on uh, the scholarships. Um, is it possible to be awarded uh, with both scholarships? So it is possible to apply for both types of scholarships, so the Erasmus Mundus and the AFSA scholarship, but it is of course not possible to be awarded both uh, scholarships. Um, Good, thank you. Uh, indeed, it's not possible to be awarded both scholarships. Indeed, the uh, Erasmus Mundus scholarship is sufficient uh, for all of your expenses, so you would not be, need or be awarded uh, an additional scholarship on top of that. Um, so uh, Ali is asking how to convert the local credits to ECTS to show that you meet the requirements. Yeah. Um, so that is a bit a difficult question because, of course, every country has its own um, yeah, educational system of credits and credit hours and, and so on. So it is uh, actually up to you to, uh, to, by Googling, you can mostly uh, find it. Uh, the thing is that um, a bachelor degree is uh, 100, is three year uh, is 180 ECTS credits. So if your um, uh, bachelor degree contains another number of credits, you can then convert. If your bachelor degree would contain uh, uh, double of 180 credits, then of course you have to divide your credits by two to uh, calculate two ECTS. Uh, but it's as every country in the world uh, more or less has its own uh, credit system. Um, it's uh, it's a bit difficult, but I would if you have a, a question on that, you can send me your transcript of records by email. Uh, also, if you upload um, your uh, transcript of record to the application portal, I will I will check it. And if we doubt, we always give you the benefit of the doubt. So if it's if we are not sure if it's really ten credits in chemistry, it's just below. Then, then we will uh, select you for eligibility to apply. Uh, Thanks, Aaron. So uh, we do have a, a lot of questions, most of which are actually available uh, for answers on the website. So we probably are not going to have time to answer uh, every single question. But please be aware: if we don't answer your question, uh, just check the website, and you will find the answer there. Okay. Um, so uh, another question, which which might not be uh, clear to some people, um, would a chemist would an online chemistry course be considered for the chemistry requirement? So a course, I suppose, which is not part of the bachelor's degree. The the chemistry uh, the obtained uh, or required credits in chemistry should have been obtained during your bachelor degree. So I receive a lot of uh, response from applicants that say, yes, but I, I followed chemistry in high school uh, during secondary education, or I followed an extra online course on chemistry. If it is an online chemistry course, and I can imagine during the COVID uh, times, um, a lot of uh, universities also switch to online education. If it is part of your bachelor degree or a previous master degree, if it's university level education and you obtained credits, university credits, um, by following this online uh, chemistry course, then we uh, we can accept uh, that. Thanks, Aaron. And then uh, we, we do have a comment asking, why is it, uh, I will graduate from my bachelor degree in June, so it is not possible to apply for Erasmus Mundus scholarship. 
why do new graduates not have the chance to apply for Erasmus Mundus scholarship? Well, it's a very competitive program, as you can imagine. Uh, it's it's covering all of your expenses. So uh, I think it's restricted to those who have already achieved their prior qualification. And of course, you do have a chance. You just need to wait until the following year. Yeah. Yeah, and indeed we have, uh, we decided uh, this because in the past we had a few times, uh, so in, in by the end of April we have to send our selected students to uh, the European Commission because they have to approve and then we, um, yeah, a few times in the past it happens that then those students that were selected did not obtain their bachelor degree in the end by this, uh, in, in June for example. And then we lost, and then other students lost this uh, scholarship. So it has a good reason. It, it's quite complex and technical to explain, but um, but I promise that it has a, a good uh, reason. And as indeed uh, I already told, we have uh, more than 500 applicants uh, every year. So uh, we can actually be quite strict uh, and set uh, clear uh, and transparent rules. Uh, Thank you. Um, and I think uh, we will move soon just to talk about some of the extracurricular activities. Um, but we do have another uh, couple of questions maybe before that. Does the language certificate, for example, TOEFL, need to be sent by the test center to the university directly in addition to uploading it to the application form? No, so you can just uh, upload yourself the certificate to the application portal. What we do not accept are just screenshots of, uh, so some people take this text uh, test online and then in the end they receive the result and then they take a screenshot and they upload the screenshot. This is not allowed. So we really need your official certificate, uh, a scan of the certificate that you will receive from IELTS or, uh, or TOEFL. Um, but you don't have to ask IELTS or TOEFL to send uh, the, the certificate directly. To, to Ghent University. There is a, a verification code on every certificate that we check. Um, and I also see here a an, an, an question on the motivation letter. So can you kindly touch on the motivation letter, uh, things uh, that will uh, need to be included? Um, well, I think this is briefly explained also in, in the application manual. So you have to prove that you understand well what SINRAM is about and that you are motivated um, to study uh, this master program. Um, and also, if you apply for a scholarship, uh, you have to uh, convince the CIDM Student Selection Committee uh, that you deserve the scholarship so that you are a top ranked student um, and that you need the scholarship uh, to, uh, to, to follow the program. I don't know if, if Marta can, has other tips for uh for the motivation letter um yeah i would just say motivating exactly why you want the syndrome program and what you plan to do with it afterwards especially if you're coming from a different background or if you have your work experience um like what made you interested in the program and also um i would say if you can integrate um, innovation and entrepreneurship um because that's a big focus on the eit raw material program so if you have um yeah some some motivations for that um that will help as well thank you martha um a uh, quick question i think is it possible to apply if we already have a master degree but in a different field yes uh, you can apply and sometimes it is seen as an added value that you have a, a master degree. Of course, if you would have a master degree already in a field that is more or less similar to SINREM, then uh, you, you will uh, not be selected uh, probably for the SINREM program. Um, but as SINREM is a quite unique program in, in the world covering this whole value chain, so I, I, have, I don't remember any previous master degree that was similar uh, to CIDREM. But if you have a master degree, for example, in geology or in uh, chemical engineering, and you want to broaden your scope by following CIDREM, that will be uh, considered as an added value, uh, actually. Thank you. And just regarding the process, after applying for CIDREM, do you need to apply separately for the Erasmus Mundus scholarship? 
No, so in the application, by, by completing the online application, uh, your online application file in our online portal, you can just select that you are uh, applying for an Erasmus Mundus scholarship and or for an AFSA scholarship. So you don't have to apply separately uh, to for the Erasmus Mundus scholarship. I also saw a question on this, on the um, design measures and the uh, but this is the website of Erasmus Mundus. This is for universities applying to get scholarships to awards to students. So you don't have to do that yourself via the Erasmus Mundus website or whatsoever. So if you follow the instructions on how to apply for SINREM that I explained in my slides, and so the link you can find in the, in the slides, uh, then you can very easily just select the option to uh, um, apply for a scholarship, and then you don't have to do anything else. Thanks, Aaron. And I think this question comes up often. If somebody's already graduated uh, from their bachelor's, um, that but the official transcript of records will be released, um, in this case, by March the 9th, beyond the deadline of application, but it's possible to provide um, a a certificate of grades which includes all the subjects yeah. received is that sufficient yeah so what i need before the deadline of the 28th of february is a proof that you have graduated some students email me i my official diploma is not awarded but i have a letter of my university stating that i have obtained my bachelor degree and that i have uh, finished successfully my courses this is also accepted um uh, before the deadline of the 28th of February. So also your transcript of records, you can even submit a student copy of your transcript of records, but I need to see all the, the courses you followed um, by the deadline of the 28th of February, if you want to apply for this Erasmus Mundus scholarship. And then the next step is if you receive the message uh, in the second week of March, that you are shortlisted uh, for uh, selection for admission or scholarship, uh, that you uh, started the process of applying for the legalized documents. And I did not include that in my slide because it's also a bit technical and, and complex, uh, but you can find, of course, all the information on our website. So then you will have to, and it depends on your nationality, on, 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 uh, on the country where you studied uh, and when you obtained your bachelor degree, uh, you will have to ask either your university or another um, body uh, in, in your country or a, a Belgian embassy in your country to legalize your diploma and transcript of records. And they will then check if those documents are uh, yeah, actually obtained at the university. And then uh, they will uh, provide stamps and the legalization. And then you will have to send these legalized documents before another deadline somewhere in June, and then um, we will uh, um, provide your uh, official uh, letter of admission to Ghent University. So this is then the next, uh, this is then the next step. Um, and Aaron, there's some questions regarding when people are going to hear the outcome of their applications. What, how long does this take, depending on which, uh, which part they are applying to? Yeah, so um, already now and also after the, the deadline of the 28th of February, I will check all uh, submitted uh, applications. Uh, this will take me a few days uh, because, of course, every day when I receive applications, I, I check them. Um, and then during the first week of February, uh, of March, sorry, so after the deadline, I will make this short list of the, uh, and then those students will be informed that they are on the short list. So they, those applicants will then be informed that the chance that they will be selected for scholarship or admission is uh, real um, or is relatively high. Um, and then the final outcome will be communicated uh, by the second week of April. Uh, because a selection committee of uh, staff members of all the universities of the Syndrome Consortium will meet during uh, the third week of uh, March, and then we will make a final decision on which students are selected for admission and uh, scholarship. So don't um, panic if you do not receive uh, any emails. Uh, so if you submit your application, you receive an automatic email 
from our application portal that we have successfully received your application and that we uh, will uh, look into it. Then you see that the, if you meet the English language um, requirements, you will see that in your application portal, if you check the status, that your English language requirements are fulfilled. Um, and then uh, the next step is by the second week of March, uh, or maybe the first week of March, that you will receive an email if you are shortlisted. Uh, and, and so then you go to the final step of the selection and admission. Um, and for EEA students who apply uh, by the end of May, when are they likely to hear the, the results of their application? Well, directly after that, because this is only a limited number of students, uh, let's say 20 students will be in this case, so it will take uh, me only a few days to check the files, to check if they are um, if they can be admitted to the program, and then I consult the Synonym Student Selection Committee uh, by email, and then uh, we check if uh, there are enough uh, AFSA scholarships uh, still available uh, for those uh, applicants. And then, so you will. It's a matter of of one or two weeks uh, after the deadline of the uh, of the thirty first of May that you will receive um, a message. But I would recommend uh, students uh, from uh, the EEA that are already that know already now that they want to apply for CINEM to apply before the deadline of the 28th of February, because then they can also apply for the Erasmus Mundus, Mundus Scholarship, of course. Good, thanks. So Erasmus Mundus Scholarship is open to students from any country, not yeah. only from international or uh, only for EEA. Any student can be eligible. Um, yes. There's a nice question from Martha, uh, from Adam. So what is something, Martha, that you wish you knew before participating in the program? Uh, perhaps advice you would give to those who will be starting the program now that you wish you had received? <laughs> yes, that's a good question. Um, I think what I would say is um, the program is very, very intense. Um, like the content is really intense and you're learning about all different types of um, things about the full value chain of raw material. So you have a lot of learning, but not only that, you're also moving around a lot. Um, so the first few months you're moving between um, Germany and, and Belgium and then Sweden afterwards. Um, and you're working with a whole bunch of international students um, from around the world and doing a lot of group work. So I would just say in general, it's really, really intense, especially that first year. Um, it's very rewarding and I would highly recommend the program. So I wouldn't want to scare anybody away with knowing how intense it is, but just, it would be good to know that and prepare yourself for that. So maybe taking some time off before the program, like a few weeks, um, because you don't get a lot of breaks, especially during that first year. Um, you're pretty much just going from one university to the next. Yeah, thanks, Martha. And there are also uh, a number of extracurricular activities available and indeed strongly encouraged for students uh, on SINREM to join uh, activities provided by EIT Raw Materials Academy. Um, Martha, I think you've been involved in a couple of those. Uh, maybe you can uh, briefly tell the participants about them. Yes. Um, yeah, so it's really nice to be a part of the EIT Raw Material group because um, they host a number of masters. So um, when I was a student, I think there was only six EIT Raw Material masters, but now there's nine, I think you mentioned, Freddie. Um, and so what's really nice about this um, group is not only do you get to interact with the SINREM students who um, there's, yeah, maybe 25 or 30 of you, but um, also all of the master students from the other programs. So there's um, a few different programs. One of them is the um, Label Startup, and that's focused on entrepreneurship and raw materials. And so we had some, um, some guest speakers um, talking about how to have a startup um, in the, the industry. Um, and like there was a challenge um, for the students. Um, there was also another event and it's at the very end of the program it's more like a graduation celebration um so you meet with all the um, label students which is i think there was over 100 of us in total in the programs um and um you get to get some career coaching um how to apply for jobs after the masters whether you're interested perhaps in a phd and how to apply for that um and then a celebratory celebration as well um and then there's also um, the race, and I didn't participate in that, but I've heard really good things. Um, it was, um, hmm, I don't know what the race stands for. Uh, Birdie? 
Yeah, so the race is the Raw and Circular Economy Expedition. And this is a two week summer school, which is open to all uh, EAT labeled students. Um, and uh, this allows you to visit different industries along the raw materials value chain. So uh, last year, we uh, the students visited um, a huge recycling center in Sweden. Uh, we visited the world's largest, uh, sorry, Europe's largest underground uh, mine or iron ore mine in the north of Sweden, right up in the Arctic Circle. Uh, and we um, engaged with a number of startups in the north of Finland and uh, visited a really high tech pilot plant again in Helsinki. Was, uh, and all of this time, the students involved were developing their own uh, entrepreneurial ideas uh, to solve challenges uh, presented by the industry. So it was an intensive two weeks. There was a lot of travel. We traveled over 3,400 kilometers uh, overground. And uh, yeah, there were a lot of uh, friendships made as well. Um, and a lot of uh, knowledge shared. So I would encourage you to uh, have a look at the uh, race website and particularly the um, uh, the uh, video from the race 2022 to give you an idea um, all about what you could expect from that. Now race, as I say, it's open to all of the students on the uh, on the label programs, but it is a competitive program as well. So you have to write a good application to be able to take part and i've just put the link in the chat to the race website um so do check it out um and uh yeah that's good so um we've only got a couple of minutes left and as i mentioned if your question has not been answered there are a lot of different ways uh, to contact us so um first of all uh, you can write to uh aaron at um uh, for any specific questions about SINREM. Um, and I am sharing now in the chat, the uh, that's the correct email address, right, Aaron? Uh, for SINREM, so please uh, send your questions there. Um, you can also talk to Martha, actually. Um, and uh, let uh, can you share um, Martha's, in fact, the uh, student ambassadors page. So we have uh, label ambassadors, they are called, of which Martha is one. And these are current and former students who are uh, available for you to chat with um, regarding their experience, asking for advice, uh, asking for recommendations, anything else that you would like to chat to uh, one of our current or former students about, please do feel free to get in touch with them on this platform. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think a lot of prospective students have found it really, really useful uh, to be able to get that information. So uh, just about to share that now in the chat. And of course, you can also, uh, if you are interested in any of the other EIT labeled programs, um, please visit uh, the website, which I am writing in the chat now as well. Um, and there you will be able to see the links to the websites of all the other EIT labeled programs as well. Okay. Um, so I think this is all that we have time for and really sorry to those of you who didn't get to their questions, but as I said, please do contact our label ambassadors. Just one moment, the link's gonna come up. You can also reach the uh, label ambassadors by clicking on the master school website, which I've shared. Uh, no, that's the wrong link. No. That's just a unibody front page. Um, the master school website and click on the chat button at the bottom right and uh, you will be able to chat with the ambassadors there so um, thank you very much I don't know uh, if anybody would like to add anything Aaron Martha no just um, best of luck with your application and feel free to reach out on Unibuddy if you have any more questions um, for me or my colleagues like Logos and Ernest are there as well yeah, and from from my side, thank you for uh, for your time, and uh, feel free to uh, to send your questions. Hey, just give us one moment more, and we will share the correct link for you to chat with the uh, current students. Everyone. And we will also send an email to everybody who attended with a link to the recording and the uh, the contacts as well. Sir, I have a question, please. 
Uh, okay, final question, Ali. Yeah, actually, I have been part of Circle Cities program, uh, which is also maybe part of Simran. And uh, I want to ask about it if that will add value during selection if someone were part of Circle Cities program. Yeah, and I think this applies to anybody, anybody who has any relevant experience which is related to the subject content of the degree program. This is going to be uh, helpful and something to include in your application. And we have to send a, a transcript in, in order to check, uh, make sure that our, our all the European graduates are fully met. Your, your transcript will be required in your application, yes. So we don't have any more time for any personal uh, questions, I'm afraid, but thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining. And uh, please do stay in touch. Uh, can we still ask questions? You can absolutely ask us questions via email, via the Unibuddy platform. Uh, and please look out for the email, which we will send you to follow up from this session. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye.